Kate, and welcome to News 10. And I'm Ellie Mint. Thank you for joining us. Earlier this week, a man was cooled to absolute zero, but he's okay now. Wow, that's cool. In other news, researchers have found the chemistry behind spicy food and why we feel that spicy sensation. Yes, and we'll investigate why some people are misled as to why some beverages will help with the spicy sensation. Hmm. But first, let's go to the streets of Markov... Wait, what was that? Markovnik... Mar... Mar... Markovnikov, Markovnikov ah, yes. and see what people think of spicy foods and what can help them ease that pain. So what do you think makes spicy food spicy and what do you think alleviates the spiciness? Well, I don't know about all spicy food, but I think peppers are spicy because of where they're grown. And to alleviate it, I've always heard that you can just eat some sour cream, but I don't know if that's actually true or not. When I eat something spicy, um, I'm not really sure what causes it to be spicy. Maybe something in the food reacts with your saliva, causing a heat sensation. Um, but when I drink some, when I eat something spicy, what I like to drink is something that's sweet, but also has a coolness to it. So maybe like iced coffee. I think foods are spicy because the spices inside of them are made from pepper seeds. And I've been told that tea alleviates spiciness. I don't know. The spicy foods are made from peppers, and the pepper's defense mechanism is to be hot. I bet cheesy foods would alleviate the hotness. Great. Now we have people's thoughts on the effects of spicy food. That's great and all, but do you think that's what they really think? Let's go test this out on the victim, I mean volunteers, who have agreed to experience this firsthand. Thank you, Al. I have two volunteers here. You want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? My name is Ray Don. And my name is Louis Dot. Ray and Lewis here are going to, they have volunteered to try our pepper here and test the effects of beverages after they've eaten the spicy pepper. So, will you guys go ahead and eat a pepper? Try We're going to wait about 15 seconds after they've eaten the pepper and then they're going to drink. Mm. Oh, it tastes pretty good so far. <laughs> <coughs> Mm. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and drink your beverages. Oh, God. Mm. It's the best milk I ever had. How are you guys feeling right now? Still pretty good up. Still pretty hot. Mm. Some good stuff right here. Water doesn't help at all. Mm. Interesting result. The milk seems to have subsided the spiciness compared to the water. <laughs> Well, back to you. Well, I'm sure glad we didn't have to taste those peppers. Oh, me too. It was a hot situation. <laughs> okay, now we are very lucky to have our special guest, Alfred Noble, to open our eyes and our taste buds to the mysterious world of spice. Hello, learners, and welcome to the laboratory. Today, we're going to explain to you exactly why this spicy molecule capsaicin causes so much pain within your mouth. Now maybe uh, you've taken a bite of a spicy food, tried to wash it down with water, and it proved rather ineffective at relieving the pain. So your mother told you, drink a glass of milk, and to your amazement, it worked perfectly. Well, that is because of the subgroups within the molecule. If you look here, we experience an isopropyl group, an alkene double bond, a ketone, an amine, benzene ring, alcohol group, and last but not least, even an ether. Now, this molecule works similarly to how molecules affect your brain whenever you, you know, take any sort of you know, medicine to try to make yourself feel better. This molecule arranges itself in such a manner to where it fits in like a key into a slot into your VR1 receptors on your tongue. Now, that is what causes the sensation of pain even though there is no actual physical harm being done. Now, there are no VR1 receptors on your skin, and that's why uh, this same molecule is actually used to treat arthritis in the elderly. They'll rub it on their skin, and it gives them the warm sensation that allows for uh, a relieving of pain. Actually, something very useful about this molecule. But now back to the water quality of it. Why does it not dissolve in water, yet does in milk? Well, that's because of lipid felicity. Now capsaicin right here is an oil. As you can see, it's a very long, long, large molecule. It just simply doesn't dissolve in water. 
It's hydrophobic, and for that very reason, it's repelled to water, yet the protein casein in milk is capable of grasping onto the molecule, holding it, and safely rendering it down the digestive tract. And that is why capsaicin is better left with the cows. Thank you. Well, looks like I know what to order to drink next time I get the blazing challenge at Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh man, that actually sounds pretty good. You want to go now? Yeah, let's do it! To be loves! <laughs>